welcome everyone. Tonight we're going to have fun, but we always do, because we are really excited when you think of all the wonderful things that's happening in this world, because the, this is a season, and it's drawing the end of a season so that the Christians take over. Amen. And we are blessed, and we take it by faith. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Get so you um, memorize these things, and I'm going to suggest again that you memorize Psalms 91, okay, because that is for battle. So I'll, I'll say that during the day, I'll read it, or I'll just start saying it, or parts of it, whatever the Lord releases me to do. So Ephesians chapter 1, Father, I thank you. You are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. I ask you, and I already thank you, and I take your wisdom, your revelation, the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding are open and enlightened so that we will know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. We have an inheritance, and it's every promise that's in the Old and the New Testament. We have it. So when you don't know what you have, then you live under the bridge like who did? What was his name? Mathevachek. He lived under the bridge. He was, he was in line for the throne. He was crippled. And he didn't think he was worthy. But what happened? They put him right at the king's table, David's table, and he ate. And they gave him land. And he had servants, but he got even more. So we have got this complete Bible. Every promise in this Bible belongs to us. You can go back to the Old Testament as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this, and, and we're going to see how much we're going to get done tonight. Because I want to show you a video. We showed it once before, Donna Jones. Do you remember her? She had an accident. She was coming around a corner, and she slid off the road, and she hit her head against the window, and she was a, a high-level executive, and she had a photographic memory, right? And what happened, for 13 years, she fought for her healing. How long have you been fighting for something? How long? Oh, at least 10 years, Dee Dee. Stop. You're just getting started. But now things are going to go faster because God's promised it. Doesn't it seem like the whole year has gone faster? Like they said, how many days till Christmas? And I was like, oh, my Lord. But now, what I want to do, though, I want to quickly show you something because we don't want to fall in this area. I want you to go to Revelations chapter 3, starting at verse 15. And I'm going to read it from the New King James, and I'm going to open the door a little bit, and I'm going to be working on more of this, okay, like tomorrow morning and Sunday morning, because we need, all we're getting, we should get understanding, and we're not. We've got to know who we are in Christ. Now tell me, did Jesus know who he was in his Father? Did he know it? Did his mother know it? Yes. So what happened when he opened up Isaiah 61? What did he see? He saw himself. And he went just so far, and he said there, and he sat down there like, and they were out to get him. But they couldn't. Because he had to go to that cross, and he had to die for us. That's how much he loved you. So if you ever wonder if anybody loves you, and you don't feel like a good person or whatever it is, Please just go to the scripture and read the promises and just look at Jesus. Just, just shut your eyes and look at him and say, he died just for me. That's how important I am to him. He died just for me. That's what took me out of being in a hellhole and brought me up. That was hard to say I love you in the mirror to myself. Now I don't because I know he loves me. We understand that, don't we? Okay. Now, it says in verse 15 of Revelations 3, I know your works, 
that you are neither what? Cold nor hot. Cold nor hot. Um, what's going on here? This is a revelation. I could wish, I could what? Wish you were cold or hot. Wow, what's, what's going on here? So now in 16, so then, because of your lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Why is he saying this? Doesn't that seem kind of harsh? I mean, it, it really does. He says on verse 17, who's going to read that one for me, Donna? Do you have that? Where do they hide that microphone? Okay, Debbie's got it. We'll get Debbie, and the next we'll get you. Because you say, I am rich, have been wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Now, what is really going on here? Do you know what happens is you read the Word of God, and for instance, you're going for healing, you're going for your finances, you, your bills paid. You want, how about a new car? How about, you know, you got one that's just running on air. You can get it. That stuff is promised to us. But don't take that over God. You know, and this is one thing, and this is by Nancy Dufresne, and some of you read the book. It is so delicious, and I'm going to keep on pushing this and pushing it. You've got to walk in love. If you don't walk in love, you're not going to get things. But you've got to walk in love because what does that do to your faith? What does it do? And vice versa. What does that do for us? Because you're walking in love, you're going to hear from God. And you want to pray in the Spirit, don't you? Why? Because he will show you things and tell you things that you need to know. And he will help you to discern. Because in these days, we know that the Muslims want to come out and take us down. Just They said, we're going to do it to Israel, and then we're going to come and get you. And I said, uh-uh. But you don't want to be on the devil's side because you could be taken down. Walk in love. Show love. Put a smile on your face, and they'll think, what is up with her? What's up with them? Let the devil see it. I'm not kidding you. Because what did Jesus say? What did God say? Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. But that walking in love is so important. Now, I'm going to just kick over here once. I think I got it on this page. Why would he tell us? Why would he go in and say, don't, eat, don't be lukewarm? Did anybody figure that out yet? Nobody? He wants us to be hot for him and be witnesses for him. Hot for him. What happens, listen to this. This is Matthew 20, 22, 37. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart and with all of thy soul and with all of thy mind. Now, I'm going someplace with this, so please track me. Then Mark 12, 20 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, this is Jesus talking. He came with two commandments, right? Love God first and love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, so if you've got a fret going on with your neighbor, you better unfret it because it's, it's not going to be pretty. Then he says in Luke 10, 27, and he, answering, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as yourself. Can you sometimes love your neighbor? You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I have no problem forgiving people. But he says in 16, so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
what are, what are we doing that he would do that? You've got the word of God, and are you hot for God? Are, is he number one? Is he number one? Do you, do you, everything that comes at you, do you turn the word of God against him? That's what we got to do. Keep that love flowing. I've said this on Sunday morning. We got to keep love flowing in our homes. Just keep that love. If somebody doesn't cooperate, I told you, my kids, when, when Kim did, disagreed, okay, I said, we're packing your suitcase and you're moving out. Right? Told Tracy the same thing and Kenny Jr. the same. Kenny Jr. left for a night, but then he came sneaking back in the next night. But then I told him, now we're going to get you an apartment. Isn't that so? You, you need your freedom, Kenny Jr. You're 18. And that little hussy was 14 that was trying to get his attention. He didn't like that, that I kicked her out. She was a hussy. So you keep harmony in your home. Oh, but I don't want my children to leave me. Then why don't you get out and let them take over your home because they're running your home right now anyway? Think about it. How many, is that a fly? No. How many kids are running the home? I had one in my house today and I got it. How many kids are running the house that we let the, our little ones get it? We're killing them. We're killing them. We're showing them how to be disobedient. And that's going to cripple them. It's going to kill them. We teach them how to be obedient so they'll be obedient to God. Right? And teach them. You, were you nursing, was it little Sam or was it Gunner? And you were praying in tongues and they started praying in tongues. Which one was that? Gunner. A little baby nursing. And he starts praying in tongues like mama. That's what it is. Outside of salvation, praying in tongues is the most important gift you can have. And people fight it. And God said, I can't do anything for you because you're fighting my blessing. Got it? Yeah. So now, um, let's look at this. Why would God say, I'll spew you out of my mouth? If you're hot for God and the devil comes at you, are you going to be swayed? No. But if you're not hot for God, are you going to be swayed? How are you going to be swayed? How are you going to be swayed? Yeah, do you get that? You're going to go by your circumstances. Now, I go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you got cancer. You put your house in order, and I say, thank you, and I, I'm going to get away from that person. Because we're, it's already promised that we're all healed. We're already all healed. And now to listen to a human being over God You've stepped into Satan's territory, and he can continue to cripple you. Do you get that? And we're going to find out more about that. So don't be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm. Be hot for God, meaning run after him because he's running after you. Got it? Like right now, we're running after God. And I brought this out on Sunday morning that we wanted to send money to little Israel. I, I didn't get the exact figure from Kim tonight. That's what I was asking. But people were generous. Generous. But just think, you gave to little, I don't care if it was five, ten, twenty dollars $20. You gave, but you're now, you get blessed because you're blessing God, so he's going to bless you. How much? In abundance to the full, to the overflow. That's how important his instructions are for us. Right? So now, if I am lukewarm, the devil is going to show me things, and I'm going to start swaying. I'm going to start swaying, right? I'm going to start swaying. So here comes, and, and they're, they're saying, there's going to be a foreclosure on your house, Didi. You know, they're just, you go, oh, no. God, I belong to you. You're hot on God. What does that mean? You trust God and you call that money in. Sick. No, I am not sick. I am healed. But if you listen to the doctor, the devil will, you will be lukewarm. 
because you will cave in to what the doctor tells you. Because what does Dr. Jesus tell you, Debbie? I'm healed. Is it guaranteed? Oh, it is. So 1 Peter 2.24, what does that say, Donna? By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. There's no reason for us to be sick, no reason for us to have problems. You know, and, and um, I, I, I had an appointment for a massage earlier this morning, and Kathy said, you are doing so good. She said, I don't have to really correct anything. But it's because I'm working out. And I was sweating. I was sweating on two. Don't laugh, you were too. <laughs> I don't know, but I was sweating. I had washed the T-shirt. I was just, but, you know, I baby this here. Do you understand what I said? All of a sudden, oh, that hurts. I don't want to do that anymore. No, no, no. This is what you tell. It doesn't rule and reign over you. You rule and reign over it. So you tell it what to do, and you get it in shape so you're not ending up in a hospital, or, right? And if there's something wrong, you take the word of God, and once you pray, it's done, and you don't ever bring it up again, but you stand on that healing. So, guys, would you play Donna Jones? We played this once before, but we're going to play it again because I want to go through this and show you how what happened to her. Remember, a high-level executive, she had a photographic memory. Now, she was at the conference, and she's also with Daniel, the um, uh, worship leader. So they have her working together at Karis Bible College because of her testimony. But 13 and a half years. So would you play that and turn it up good, please? Would you guys go through this? Would you last that long? I had a very high profile job. I had a photographic memory, several people, several organizations, several consulting groups working for me. If you had knew me or you talked to me, I would tell you all about what I did for a living. And that was all my identity was. Then the brain injury came and my identity for the next 13 and a half years became the brain injury. January 6, 1995, my car skidded on black ice. I ended up hitting my head and I hit the bar on the side of the car window. It should have killed me. The first doctor diagnosed me with a traumatic brain injury. I fell below the 25 percentile. Anybody below the 25 percentile is considered legally disabled. Cognitively, I fell in the fifth to ninth percentile. I was a math major, and I could not do a simple third grade math problem. One pain felt like my head was like maybe a pumpkin, and somebody had a machete knife and was just stabbing my head. Another pain felt like an electrical current that shoot from one side of my head to the other. I think deep down inside of me, I knew there was um, a journey I was about to begin. In an instant, Donna Jones, a high-level executive, went from having a photographic memory to being cognitively disabled. Her diagnosis would include severe pain and limited mobility, but even more detrimental would be the loss of her cognitive abilities, specifically her short-term memory. This is a story of how Andrew's free teachings broke through a dysfunctional brain to help one woman from New Jersey realize her identity in Christ. This is the healing journey of Donna Jones. This healing journey begins years after Donna's car accident, where even as a brain injury survivor, she managed to find creative ways to maintain both an active life and her corporate position at work. It took me over two hours to get ready in the morning. I would forget to eat breakfast. So I would have this checklist that I would go through, take a shower, brush your teeth, get dressed. It was very difficult for me to be around people. Um, it was very difficult for me to be around a lot of noise. My life became sitting on the sofa, just sleeping for days. Every year since I was 21, we would go skiing and I would really just stare out that window and just dream about seeing the mountains again. Work was so great at compensating. They, you know, they gave me a private office. 
I had people that would go food shopping for me. I had people who paid my bills. Because if I looked at the bill and then I went to look at the checkbook, that just moment would just vanish. Donald was working at AT&T at the time, the largest telecommunications company in the world. And she didn't know what the flashing light on her phone was. She asked me, she goes, what is that? I can't get rid of that. Um, it means you have a message? That made me realize, yeah, she needs help. We worked on a team together that was really close. We were together, you know, a lot. So we got to know each other very well. And it wasn't long before I found out we were both saved. She thought, God gave me this brain injury. She would say, it's a gift. I thought he was in control of everything. So I really believed that God chose me. I was going to raise awareness. I was going to get the word out about brain injuries. I was going to be the spokesperson for those brain injury people who could not articulate what they were going through. Donna's whole identity was wrapped up in the brain injury. And thus, her cycle of pain, confusion, and checklists continued for years. That is, until the day that her coworker, Elisa, introduced her to Kathy, who was teaching a women's Bible study based on Andrew's teaching, God Wants You Well. Elisa, who was the girl, said, you know, hey, Donna has a brain injury, and I'd like you to talk to her. And I just told her, you can be healed of that brain injury. You know, and I remember looking at her and going, no, nah, she's crazy. I have MRIs, CAT scans, I have all these doctor reports, and she doesn't understand the full extent of this injury. You know, but God used that to plant a seed in my heart. You know, I gave her some scriptures, and I pointed her towards Andrew's uh, website, and I said, you know, listen to some good teaching on there, watch some of the healing videos and things that are on there, and she did. Nikki's popped out for me. A lot of the symptoms she described were very similar to my symptoms. I identified with her, and if she got completely healed, I knew I could be as well. And I think that was, um, that was something that was really powerful for me at that moment. From that moment on, Donna believed it was God's will for her to be healed, and with the help of Elisa and Kathy, was determined to listen to Andrew's teachings until something broke through her damaged mind and became a personal revelation. Donna didn't have to unlearn anything because it was gone. So she had this childlike faith, unlike anyone that I've ever met. When she got a hold of a scripture, she believed it. Myself and Elisa, we would on a weekly basis share scripture with her. Kathy was very good at directing me to where to go to listen. So I would just click on those links and just listen to him over and over. I don't think my natural brain was processing and understanding the information, but I really believe my spirit was hearing every word. I had to be healed emotionally first before I could be healed physically. The emotions of not feeling worthy, the emotions of, of being insecure. It says, and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You aren't in the process of becoming righteous and holy. You were created that way. It was, you were just, changed instantly when you got born again. If you can begin to understand that and focus on that, it will just automatically make the problems and the things that you're struggling with fall away. My identity changed from being a brain injury survivor to being a child of the Most High God. I believed that Jesus, by His stripes, took that 2,000 years ago, and something just clicked. I had a green bracelet that I wore on my wrist, and it was to raise awareness, because remember, I thought God chose me to raise awareness about brain injuries. I took that green bracelet off, almost like I didn't need that anymore. I also had a handicap sticker, and I said, if God really truly healed me, I don't need that handicap sticker anymore. I don't need to um, have any identity with this brain injury, so I actually took that handicap sticker off. A couple days later, we were sitting in church, and there was an altar call for healing. Elisa was standing there and she had her hand on my back. As we're praying, I see a, a timer, like an egg timer with that red dial on the top, and I heard the ding of it being done. Something went whoosh off the top of my head. I could actually feel like it was lifting up to heaven. The manifestation took place and I was completely healed of the pain and the disability and everything I lived with for 13 and a half years.
Then something interesting happened five years later. On my way to work one morning, I was stopped at a traffic light and somebody crashed into the back of my car while I was perfectly still. The impact was so significant. I remember just sitting there going, this is familiar territory. I've been down this road before. This, is, this doesn't feel good. I remember them coming back and, them, and giving me that diagnosis again. I had another traumatic brain injury. So for about three weeks, I lived with those symptoms again. The pain was so bad in my eyes, I literally could not move. If I moved at all, I could, the pain was just, would just rip through my head and my eyes to the point where I would sit with the phone and I would dial 91. And I would sit there and say, how bad does it get before I dial that last one? But I had the TV on and I, you know, somebody came on and they, they would just say, call out to Jesus. So I just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And something physically fell off me and it fell from the top of my head to the floor. We're to the point where I was actually like trying to catch what was falling. It was that significant. And God told me fear fell off me. I was starting to fear that I was gonna live like this again, that my journey again was gonna be living with this brain injury. And when God broke and Jesus broke that fear off me, then my brain completely woke up and I was just, you know, completely healed again, radically healed. Jesus already bought and paid for my healing. Those stripes he took on his back were for my healing. It was for my disability. It was for my pain. So it means it's already done. It's a done deal. I've already got it. Kathy and I uh, go out and teach now, and we have a ministry called Healing is for Everyone. We really want to reveal God's heart, that God really wants you well. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And once she discovered it was not God's will for her to have a brain injury, but rather Jesus paid for her healing, faith was easy. She's got an amazing story, but the story is bigger than just her experience. The story is about hope and the story is about faith. She's really tuned in, turned on, and uh, <laughs> I don't think I could keep up with her. She's running a million miles an hour. I'm ecstatic about seeing where she's going because she's not done yet. In addition to her teaching ministry with Kathy, Donna has published multiple books on healing, including two focused on her own journey. Andrew would like to encourage you to visit their website at healingisforeveryone.com. As if she wasn't busy enough already, Donna has just headed westward on her next adventure to attend Caris Bible College where she'll learn even more about the truths that set her free. I just want to thank the partners of Andrew Womack's Ministries and the ability for these teachings to be free and online. It has just been such a powerful resource. It's literally changed my life. And Donna is just one example of the lives transformed thanks to the free teachings made available by our friends and partners. As for Donna's desire to see the mountains again, Let's just say that God is giving her quite the view. That, you know what, when you watch those things, you start putting things back in perspective. Now, you can go on your YouTube and bring up all these videos. You know, if you're not doing well with something, get the videos, listen to it, but don't ever go back. Okay, now you saw when somebody bumped her, right? She said, I don't want to go through this again, right? But she stayed on her healing. She stuck with the word. She was hot on the word. Because I'll guarantee you, if you give in and you go backwards, the fight is going to be harder, but there will be permanent damage. You say, oh, no, devil, not you. You know, now when you look around, you know, she had people that were there to help her. That's why we come together and we find other people of like mind because it is hard to find somebody in some of the churches. You know, what do they say? Oh, it's God's will. If, if it says in the word, by the stripes of Jesus you were healed, when was I healed? At the cross. I was healed at the cross. Jesus Christ took all of that pain, all that sickness, all the, he took it all. And for us not to receive it, it's spitting in his face. 
just like the Roman soldiers spat in his face. So now what we have to do is get that inside of us and believe the word of God. You don't go backwards, you go forward. And she, again, she had people around her to help her. And she, she had to write down what she was doing, what she had to do, brush her teeth, you know what I mean? Can you only imagine a high executive to all of a sudden go down? Thirteen and a half years, and now she's all restored. And she, she I don't know if she's working at Karis, but she's on Daniel's team. And to hear her up there and talk and to see, that makes you feel good. Nothing is impossible for God. You don't go backwards, right? So now, let's go to our, our book here. And then 2 Timothy 1.7, don't forget that. God did not give you a spirit of fear. So when you go backwards and you look at, oh, I got these money problems yet, what you just did is you said to Satan, Make, give me some problems. Oh, I'm still sick. I still hurt. You just gave Satan the dance floor. That's why death and life are in the power of our tongue, and you're going to eat the fruit of whatever you say, right? That's why your emotions come under, but that's why you work on that love factor. Constantly work on that love, love factor. Some people have a, a, a fast tongue, and it's, and if that's you, Cut it off. It will hurt you. Now, what does this say on my little sign again? What does it say? Tell me. Oh, so we don't have to fear anything. Is that true? Then why don't we do that? Just, no, you're not going to take me down saying I'm too strong for you because I know who's got my back. The Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, has my back. And then I'm around people that are like-minded that aren't going to let me get away with stuff. Because if I say the word the wrong word, he shall say, Pastor, that's not true. Don't say that. Katie will say, Aunt Janet, stop it. That's what we need. Because we coddle this flesh. And what did God do? He told us not to do that. Don't coddle your flesh. Don't. No. Well, you could make the situation worse. No, it won't. Everything is going to be good. Now, we were finishing up here on 96 because I wanted to go over this again. Now, I'm going to remind you again that, like on Sunday, when that shofar horn blows, what is happening to the pineal gland in your brain? It's opening up, and what's going in? The blessings, and what are the blessings? Healed, wealth, peace, joy. But if you come in and you miss that, you just missed it. And nobody can do a thing for you. Do you understand that? That's why you got to be ready. I'm just, I'm ready. Don't bother me. I'm ready. Okay? So let's go to there again, um, page 96, and healing a holy what? Oh, well, Donna, you got the thing, don't you? Give that to Okay, Luke 14, 1. And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. Now, why were they watching him? Why were they watching him? They wanted to convict him or charge him They with wanted to see when he was going to stumble so they could take him out. Instead of thinking the way God's think, they, they think, like, they think, they think like Satan. So when we say, I'm just not feeling good today, Bonnie, uh, I just, what I did was I stepped into Satan's territory. Don't say your words or Satan's words. Say God's words. You said, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I receive it. I receive it. No. Pain, get off. you got to get nasty with the devil because he'll take you over. Got it? Go ahead. They weren't watching to learn from him, 
They were watching to see if he would heal the sick on the Sabbath day. They watched with a critical eye. As the late Dr. Lester Summerall stated, if you want to be a part of a move of God, never criticize it. No, no, critical. They had a critical eye. How many people just want to make trouble and they come with a critical eye in your space? You know, you know what I'm saying? Get away from them. Let them all alone. Go ahead. Although Jesus was in the Pharisee's house, the Pharisee had no idea of the identity of his visitor. This Pharisee was a host to the greatest gift ever sent to the earth, God's own son, but his critical eye kept him from receiving anything. Whoa, there it is. There was a critical person there. Now, if you hang around critical people and you're trying to get wealth, you're trying to get um, healed or anything, you cannot be around critical can't. Now, Gina Boop and Bud Boop, he had to put everybody out of that hospital room and would not allow them to speak. The same thing, Pastor Kenny, when we were um, with, with Kyle in Oconomowoc, our son-in-law, when the doctors came in, he asked them if they would step out and not talk about this with Kyle and Ernest. That took guts. And they included us in all of their meetings. But they'd say, let's meet out here. You've got to set your boundaries. If you're going to be around people that are going to pull you down, then just let go. Just let go. You understand? No, you're not going to do that. So go ahead. Seated before Jesus was a man with dropsy, which is an accumulation of fluid in the tissues that brings severe puffiness. What do you think that was? What do you think when you got puffiness and hurting all? Do you think it was arthritis? Do you think, huh? think something's wrong with them? Yeah. Ooh, go on. Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees present, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Luke 14, verse 3. He knew their thoughts. They considered divine healing to be an unholy act, unfit for a holy day. But Jesus challenged that by healing on the Sabbath day. He showed that the healing of a person's body is a divine, holy work, for it springs from a holy God. Healing is a flow of the love of God, and it is a holy flow fit for the Sabbath day. Jesus questioned them. Luke 14, verse 5. Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? He accused them of showing more compassion for an animal that falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, then they showed for a human being who was bound in a pit of sickness. Their compassion, he pointed out, was misplaced. When Jesus healed the man, they could not answer him again to these things. Luke 14, verse 6. Now, how did, they, how did Jesus know that? Remember, Jesus walked as a man. He walked as a man, but then he was baptized in the Jordan River, and who came upon him? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Who do you have? Can you discern? Yes, you can. If you're born again, you have that spirit in you to discern. And he discerned just by the looks on their faces. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So that's why I say just be happy and go smiling. If you're not feeling good, get your butt up off the couch and go for a walk, go shopping. I don't care what it is. And put a smile on your face. And by the time you get home, you will be healed. No, I can't guarantee you, but I know what I do. You ever get in a mood sometimes things happen and you just had to get out away from home for a little while so that you don't understand what I'm saying? Yes. Change the scenery. Change the scenery. But you've got to watch who you hang around because that it's going to pull you back. Isn't that what he's saying? Yeah. Okay, Pastor Kenny, you want to read? Start on Chapter 8. The, the Noble Man's Son. The noble man's son. So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. 
Did you get that? <clears throat> now, this nobleman, how did he hear about Jesus? Do you think the bird of the air lined it all up? See, I keep on going back to that. And to think he came to Jesus. But let's read on a little bit, and then we'll get more understanding of what's happening here. Then Jesus said unto him, <clears throat> Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So we got stiff-necked people. They got to see signs and wonders, right? Yep. Do you have to see signs and wonders to be well? We shouldn't have to. We should see the word. The word, right? Yep. Dori Osteen, she had two weeks left to live. And what did she do? They got one under one arm and one under the other arm. She went out and she started witnessing to people. She's still alive. Did you get it? She did have a few treatments of chemo to slow it up. But then that was done. She's healthy. Yeah. But it, like, you know, that point of death, you want to just get through that hump and slow it up for a minute so you can get ahead of it. Go on, Kenny. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down here, my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go by the way, the son liveth. The man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. What did he what was he doing? Well go on and read, let's see it. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they amen said, Amen means what? Heal. Get better. Get better. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. That seventh hour was one o'clock in the afternoon. So the Father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. This is again in the second miracle that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. John 4, 46 through 54. This passage shows the first healing recorded under the ministry of Jesus. Yet it was a second miracle. First miracle where Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding feast. John 2, 1 through 11, took place in Cana, in the city where this nobleman met Jesus. It must be noted that his first healing was not an instantaneous healing. Instead, the sick boy began to amend. Verse 52, although it was not instantaneously, it was still a miracle, verse 54. Too often, believers are guilty of assuming that all miracles are instantaneously. The enemy takes advantage of this wrong thinking and causes doubts to arise. Then they end up losing out in their miracle. Now, again, it says, you know, don't be lukewarm. What did Jesus do? He took the scriptures and he spoke the scriptures. He spoke the scriptures. And it's going to tell us that now when you have the word, because, you know, and, and she's going to explain that a little bit about, oh, if Jesus was here and laid hands on me. Well, the word of God right here, he's right there with you. When you speak the word, if you want to see him laying hands on you, go ahead. But we've got everything. We've got everything. But we don't receive it because there is the devil out there whispering stuff all the time. But he uses people. Do, do you really? Yeah. Sometimes you go some places and you think, I can't stay here long. You ever have that? i got to get out of here. You better get out of there if you're fighting something. Get out. Why? Because the words the devil will go, He'll just get at you, and before you know it, you'll even dream about it. Watch it. Okay, let's go on. The man who grew. Didi, you want to take a turn in reading there, babe? One healing evangelist from the 1950s related the testimony of a man whose, 
whose growth had been stunted, and he was abnormally short. After receiving prayer in his evangelist healing line, nothing happened immediately. But over the course of several months, the man grew several inches in height. Although his miracle wasn't instantaneously, it was still a miracle. We miss the supernatural by confi confining God to the in in oh, instantaneously. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that word. This man could have looked at his physical condition after having received prayer, seen no difference in his height, and walked away in unbelief, thinking that divine healing didn't work. If he had done that, he would have lost all of his great mir uh, lost out on his great miracle. Obviously, he didn't do that. He believed that his condition changed when he received prayer. So what is the difference? What did he do? He believed that when he was prayed for, it was done. Right. He, that's what he <laughs> saw in his heart because he was hot for God. Yeah. But if you're not hot for the word, a doctor can pull you away. A neighbor, a, a, a grandchild, a child, a, you know, a neighbor can pull you away. Because now you start to doubt. That's called lukewarm. And God said, if you're lukewarm, I have to spill you out of my mouth. You get that? We don't want to be lukewarm. So now let a body, a new body part. Who wants to read that, Keisha? Another evangelist told of a woman who came into his heel healing line, wanting prayer to have a missing toe restored to her foot. A year later, she found the evangelist at a meeting and testified that God had created a new toe on her foot. Wow. She told him that nothing seemingly happened at the time she was prayed for, but she kept thanking God every day for her new toe. Over the course of a year, the new toe began to form, and it grew little by little. Well, well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that possible to grow a toe? Yes. Is there anything impossible for God, Keisha? No. Then why do we believe that? Well, this is impossible, you know. Well, what you did, you stepped into enemy's territory, and he's going to be glad to serve you. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be good again. So we've got to, when you're prayed for, believe it, but you take that with you. Write it on, remember, I'm the, I like notes. I, in my office, I got notes. I got those little cards out. Once I get prayed for something, it's done. Amen. And a lot of times I don't tell anybody about it because I don't want anybody stealing my healing. I don't want to even hear it. But I'm going to praise and worship because what is praise and worship? That's the highest form of praise. But I'll tell you, when that shofar horn blows here, and if there's anything going on in my body, I know the pineal gland opens up, and I know that word of God is just going Amen. through, cleaning out everything, giving me everything I want. If I want, if I need money, if I um, need healing, if I need peace, whatever it is, it's got to be there. Amen. See, God formed all those things for us. Amen. But we don't realize it, do we? No, because... God says you're lukewarm. That, that's, that's kind of a stirrer-upper, isn't it? So sometimes we've got to shut our mouth because we want to tell them all about my pain, all about what's going on, and it just doesn't seem to go right. Well, what you did was you activated Satan, and now you're going to have to get that off your back too. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's watch your mouth. What is in your tongue? Life and death. Life and death. Yeah. And where do I find that? Proverbs. Proverbs? I know you know it. Who knows it? Proverbs 1820. Whoops. 1821. Death and life are in the power of your tongue, and you're going to eat the fruit of it. That's why. But, but you can say, well, that's just words. No, no. Does God, is every word you say penned down? Yes. Is it pen down? Yes. Is that in Psalms 45? Then why aren't we taking that serious? Mm. See, we're, we're lukewarm. Yep. We're not going to stay that way. Amen. We're going to another level. Amen. Right? So yes. watch everything you say. 
and don't judge people and get into that love walk. Smile that you look in the mirror and you say, ooh, that thing stays on my face all the time, that smile. And when you're, when you're saying your scriptures, say them loud. Amen. No whispering, but you got to say it. you got to say it. See, the devil cannot read your mind. God can, but he cannot step over your free will, so you have to say it for him to enforce that for you. So who really enforces it? We do, because we speak it. Now, God's got to take that word, Jeremiah 1.12 and Isaiah 55.11, and he's got to watch over that and bring that back full and complete. But it's up to me. It's up to, but if I give in and complain, just kick yourself and say, I'm back on the horse again. Stop it. Because you will be waiting and waiting, and then you will become what? Weary. And God says, don't become weary. Don't give up. We don't ever give up. You know, so many times, and um, this was, wasn't this with um, Jimmy Evans? And he said, what happens is we're going along and we're doing really good, and all of a sudden we say the opposite and we're right back. Remember he used to do that? We can't do that. We've got to watch what comes out. But just think, every time the devil wants you to complain, you start praising and worshiping. Get yourself a song and going. Hmm? That's what we got to do. Praise and worship is the highest what? What is it? The highest form of praising God. And the devil hates it. That's why you put on Christian music. Don't listen to, don't listen to the world music because it will take you down. Right? Yeah. So, okay, go on. Just think how the devil could have robbed her of this miracle if she had gone by what she saw at the time she was prayed for. Yep. When the prayer of faith is offered, healing always begins. Yep. And as we continue to release our faith, the power of God continues to flow. For the healing to be consummated, our faith must continue. Mark 16, 18 says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That recovery process may happen quickly or take longer. So, so some will recover more quickly than others, but that is certainly no reason to doubt. Wow. Okay, this is what the Lord showed me today. Did you ever fill up a bathtub and you turn on the faucet? Put the stopper in, and you stand there. It takes a long time to fill up, right? But if you turn that water on and you walk out, you come back maybe, what, six, seven minutes, ten minutes? Whoa! And you put bubbles in there? Ooh, that's a nice... But when we stand and watch things, the devil can use it against us. When you pray, it is finished. Amen. When you pray, it is finished. But then as times are going on and we become weary because we get into emotion. And is God an emotional God? Yes. No. You've got to guard your emotions. Well, I don't know. I'm just so upset today. I'm just tired. I just, I, Didi, I just give up. Sometimes I just... And Janet, stop it. She's got to be kind enough to tell me to shut my mouth. Do you see what emotions will do? If you're tired, then go lay, shut your mouth and go lay down for a while. But watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. We, we have words coming out of it that shouldn't be coming out of our mouth. Okay? The donkey, remember him? He spoke to the guy? Yeah. Wow. But we got to get this. We've got it, right? So you're, you, we're always looking at increase. Yeah. You look at Donna Jones. She, was, she, was, she took the thing off the, the, the you know, for the um, huh, wheelchair, you know, handicap, and then she gets bumped from behind. What would you do? Well, you know what happened to me? This is what happened to me, and I got the same prompt. 
you know what, you just went so far backwards, now you're going to have to play catch up. She didn't do that, did she? No. She stayed on the path that her friends were supporting her. She was even helping Kathy teach Bible study. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. We've got to, with all of our getting, we've got to get understanding. All right? And then think of the bathtub again. How long does it take to fill it up? But if you stand and watch, you're going to become discouraged. Now, when, when you look at this, this, um, this fellow, the, the nobles, noblest man, you know, he, he just said, I receive it, that he received it. And as he's going home, somebody says, come running, because it took him two days to get home. And he said, your son is alive. He could have said, why didn't Jesus come with me? Why didn't he take more time? I know when he gets home, my kid will be dead. I just, I am so done. Isn't that what we do? You know why? Because we do not have discipline of our words. So now, you find your scripture. You put that scripture up and don't you dare deviate it from it. Now, when you have kids in the home, sometimes that can be a little stressful, right? But you put your rules and you put the consequences and you run a tight ship. And my kids, if any of them were sitting here, they would know it was a tight ship. And if I said I was going to do something to punish them, they got it. Got it? Yeah. Kenny didn't have to worry and come home and try to straighten the kids out. They were straightened out. But that's the way I rule. But when I got born again and I realized that if your children, okay, aren't trained and your children are disobedient, God says that will shorten their life. I don't want my children's life shortened. I didn't want that. I don't want that. We've got to think on those things. And if they try to talk back, don't ever do that to me again. Do you get it? I've got this little switch, and I can get the calf of your leg real easy. Well, I don't believe in hitting my kid. Well, then God says, he does. What does he say in the word? Spare the rod and spoil the child. And spoil means what? What does it do? Ruin. Ruin your child. So now that child doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell. But isn't that what the world is doing? We can't let that happen. We've got to stand. So um, so we've got to fight. You know, I've I got to tell you this here, too. Did you ever read someone is obituary and they died of cancer? Did you ever read their obituary? What does it say? What did they do? He fought, he fought the good fight. Fought the good fight. Well, he died of cancer. He didn't fight nothing. You don't fight him. You don't fight him on this earth. You go right up here and you fight him spiritually. And you tell that cancer to get lost and you start the scripture. You start praise and worship. Every time you turn around, you're praising and worshiping. And then you turn around and take your scripture and put your scripture up and you keep that before your eyes. And if somebody comes in your house and they want to do the opposite, you're going to have to leave because you're fighting a battle. But it's here, but the devil wants you down here. And the devil wants to keep on after you and after you. Are you getting this? We're not going to mess with that, are we? We're not going to mess with that. So, again, they fought, or they'll say, they fought a good, courageous battle. And every time I see that, I just want to... Mm-hmm. Then they lost the battle. They didn't win nothing. Did you, does that make sense? Is there anything impossible? How many people have you known that you've heard testimonies on? And they just have days or weeks to live, and they lived. Right? Andrew Womack's son died for how many hours? Five hours. He was in the morgue with a toe tag on. That's, that's the freezer. He's still alive today because Jamie 
and Andrew got in that car, and they had to drive, what, an hour and a half, something like that, to get there, and it said to his son that called him, he said, don't let them remove him. By the time they got there, because they prayed and worshiped things, same thing we did with Kyle. When they got there, the son was sitting up. He lives yet today. How many people would give up? Because we get into emotions. Is that true? We're not going to get into emotions. We're going to get into the Word of God in every situation. So if you, when you find your scripture, you write that scripture down. It'll take you to another one. You write that down, and you look at that, and you remind yourself, and you just kick yourself once in a while if you want to get off and feel sorry for yourself. Stop it. Right? We're not going to do it. That's how you fight the good fight. Right? When we were building this building, Kenny had to deal with two other board members. He never lost his sight from what God had told him. Got it? They said, you can't build it for that. He said, yes, we can. And did we? We never bore. Pardon? That isn't what I said. I said, I know I can, yes. but God can. That's right, because God behind us, and we never borrowed money to build this church. Because then we become the borrower and not the lender. And hey, you're going to borrow money for a house. You're going to borrow money. That's okay, but can you pay it back? Can you pay it back? Now, right now, if we had, where we owed the bank money, and they decide to come and pull in our loan, and we couldn't pay it, who does the building belong to? Uh-oh, I don't like that. Do you? Even with my home, if I can't pay the taxes, they're going to come and get even my house. They're not going to let me take anything. Can I dig up the flowers? Get out. You see it? See, this is why I know this is hard. I know it sounds like I'm being really bossy. <laughs> But this is God's word. This is God's word, and this is what we're going to stand on, and we're not going to become weary, and we're going to help each other. And if you start complaining about something, I'm going to say, speak to the hand. Speak to the hand. I'm not going to put up with it. It's for our good. Right? So get on the wagon, and whatever you spoke, whatever scripture you had, don't let it go and don't complain that it's not happening fast enough because get that love walk. That's one of the things that um, I think it was Dwayne Sheriff at the meeting, but that's the one thing, and I, I think it was Greg Moore too, that messes us up is our love walk. Our love walk. So you got to look at that love walk and you got to keep on going. And there's times you're going to say, I love the Lord, I God with all my heart, my soul, my love. I love my neighbor as myself. I love my husband as myself. I love my children as I love. You've got to do that if you want to. And but once you're doing that, you're going to see you're going to win at everything. You know that? Hey, to go to the, my massage therapist today, she said, and the last time she said that too, she said, you're in such good shape. Remember I was telling you that? You know, you have that... Um, fascia under the skin, like if you take the skin of a chicken up, it's like slimy stuff, or that sparklies, whatever you call it, you know. We've got that. And it used to be pulled here and there. You go to a chiropractor and uh -huh, go home and you feel worse. This time, she said, you're even better than the last time. I said, well, how about that? You get it? Who Told us we should keep moving all the time. If I sit and lay around, do you think I'm going to have problems? If I overeat, do you think I'm going to have problems? My frame is not going to carry that all. I want to be healthy. Now, next month, I'm going to be 80, and I'm just getting started. I could run circles around some of you. <laughs> I'll run and you stand still. So that's where we're going to quit for tonight, and we'll, we'll continue the continuous healing miracles. And that's what he's talking about. And when you look at the noble man's son, 
That son was beaten. It took him two days to get home. That normal man's son was healed. That was a miracle, right? And then he checked to see what time was he healed. And they said it in the scripture, one o'clock. That's amazing. That's when Jesus prayed. Get that? Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So you start getting that under your craw and you say, whenever I speak, you better listen to Satan because I'm, I'm going to kick your ego. You get it? And then you're going to speak it. If there's something wrong that you need turned around, you find your scripture and then you stand on that scripture. And then you continue to praise and worship God. You praise and worship God. Pray in the spirit. Because there's some things that are harder than others to get away. And then you praise and worship. And when that shofar horn blows, you go, I got it. I know I got it. And you will feel that through your body. Do you know that's even good for the skin and for wrinkles on faces? Do you know that? There's so many things included. It's, it, it balances the body even. But if you don't know it, you're not going to receive it. I, and I'll tell you this quick. I talked to Gideon, a young man who was at the conference, and he was a Jew. He is a Jew. And um, he had his little kippah on, you know, and then he had the shofar horn. And that's the picture I showed. And he was blowing the shofar horn. And I said, give me a little more on this. So when I saw him the next day, I just had to bless him. And um, he said, I said, could you tell me what that? And he said, I copied it out for you when I went, went back to my room last night. See, God did that, put us in contact with him so he could tell me and we could get more of it, the fullness of it. And I said, did you ever hear where the pineal gland? He said, no, I didn't, but that certainly makes sense because there's a sound that comes out of a kosher horn like we have, shofar horn, that no other ones do. They got to be kosher. The small ones, they got kosher ones too, but this is kosher. We know it. Meaning... The right sound comes out of it. Destroys the works of the enemy. Guys, we got so much that God has done for us. But we've got to pick it up and guard it. The hardest thing sometimes to do. You get that? You know, my brother Dwayne, he hated me with a passion. When I got saved, he hated me. And you said this, and others said, now he loves you, he accepted Jesus, God lined it up. That man, when I went there, I said, Dwayne, do you know who I am? Do you remember who I am? Yeah, my beautiful sister Janet. I stopped in my tracks, and I couldn't wait to get home and tell him what, what Dwayne said to me. So for three and a half years, he was so nice to me. Lots of love. In fact, my sister Vera said, what did you do to him? I said, I didn't do nothing. Just led him to the Lord. That's all it took. Honey, Jesus took over. Hmm? Is God good? We've got to take the word of God, and it's got to be first place. Right? I hope you got something out of this because we will continue. And then tomorrow morning, girls, bring this to the Bible study because I'm going to work on this and work on because we need to get this in our craw because we're, we're, we're telling problem. We got this problem. Jesus didn't do that. He shut the devil down, right? Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take communion. You've got your communion there? We're going to take that. Why are we taking communion? Because we have a covenant. That covenant gave us the right to use every scripture in this Bible. And he promised us that it would come to pass if we believe. So you've got to believe when you, when you pray it. You've got to believe, and it is guaranteed. Like that lady, Donna Jones, she had to believe it. Thirteen and a half years but friends were there to help her out and to help her come back. She had to get on the scripture. She had to get into it. She was a busy woman. 
But boy, when I heard her on that panel at Andrews, clear as a bell, just completely restored. People don't get restored of that. So now we have what, all, what this says, we've got it, and we can believe it, and we take it. You agree? And let's eat. And, mm, mm, mm. thank you, Jesus. God said, too, when we eat the bread, we should eat all of it. What does that mean? That means everything, every promise in this Bible, you're eating it. So if you have need of anything in this Bible, you will have it. You will have it. So, well, yeah, I heard that. Things that we have missed. Things that we have missed. Because we left the world to or we try to do it ourselves. Do you ever do that? I'm going to do this. I'm going to just right through. I tried that. It doesn't work. I'm going to wait on the Lord, but when he tells me, it's done. It's done. Dee Dee had brought a video of Dutch, Dutch sheets, and she said about playing it, and I said, not tonight. Well, we're listening to the music, of course, one of my favorite songs, Never Lost a Battle, and the Lord said, Play that. And I said, play that. He straightened me out, didn't he? He needed that. And it is good. So now, what does the blood do to Satan? What? I can't hear nothing. Can't close the power. It destroys the power. That's the way you got to get. Listen, it, you... you you go to join the army, and they're training you because you're going to go out and battle. Are you going to lay around and say, I'll see you at noontime, I'm going to sleep in this morning? No. We're in a battle. And we've already won, but we've got to hold that place. We can't let go of that place. It belongs to us. So now... We thank you, Father God, that the blood that Jesus Christ shed, your son, for us, destroyed the works of the devil, and we stand on that, and we receive it in Jesus' name. Let's drink. God is good? Okay, we got, we got just a little, little time. Anybody have a testimony? Okay, give it, give it. God loves testimonies. Yeah. So I, our, we had a neighbor moving out and, um, well, not moving out, but anyway, neighbor was dead. The house was up for sale. Um, and we, and my next door neighbor was really nervous about, I don't know who's going to move into this house. And we, ju we, I just said, we're praying. And I'm like, I already prayed for this. Um, and I'm like, we're going to have good neighbors that move in. Um, and I, I claim that, and I, we have the best neighbor ever, him and his wife. Um, They're in their 20s. Um, he's a state patrol, <laughs> and he has his car out there. He was like, I have my billboard out, and I like him. Yeah. So look, I appreciate we were We came into agreement. Mm -hmm. it, that's like Jeff right behind us, policeman. <laughs> and we he comes over and brings us stuff and just... I mean, we're ble we've gotten more policemen in our neighborhood. Don't mess with me. He likes my sign on the house. We don't call 911 and I'm standing there with a gun on this thing. You know. Now I'm going to get a picture of a pig and put it out there. The Hamas hates pigs. They don't even want to go... <laughs> It's called a spun farkle. <laughs> you stuff them with dressing and, and, and sauerkraut, and they're delicious. <laughs> Dad used to have that down at the tavern. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, Father, I think, did, did anybody else have a testimony? Oh, you have? I didn't yeah. want to miss it. Um, so, um, yesterday, I got in my car after work to leave, and I turned the key, and nothing happened. Hmm. Nothing. Everyone else from... My company was gone. Um, there were some neighbors, a tenant was there. but So I called Brian and I said, you know, there are guys here. 
do you want me to just go and see it? Well, first of all, I opened the hood. I thought, well, maybe the um, connections are loose. I had that happen one time that the battery connections were just loose and nothing happened. Well, I looked at that and they looked fine. So um, I had the hood open and called Brian and he's like, no, I don't want someone doing it if they don't know what they're doing. So he was going to come, which takes you know, 35 minutes or so. <laughs> um, but I was fine. I got my Bible out, and I was just reading my Bible. Um, in the meantime, I called Lynn, and I said, I want you to get into agreement with me. This is what happened. But I said, it's not going to be anything costly. There are going to be no repairs needed. So um, one guy came out, got in his truck, and left, and I, I was fine. A second guy came out after quite a while. I was sitting there at least half an hour. Um, and he said, do you need some help? Do you need a jump? And I said, well, yeah, um, I had battery cables. So um, it didn't start right away. Um, one time it kind of went, Neep! and then it stopped. And so we tried it, and we tried, and he tr tried different connections. And finally it started, and by that time Brian was there. So he said, I will follow you to um, like AutoZone or something like that. So we, we went there and um, on the way there, it was kind of doing some funny things. And I told him, he's like, well, we'll start with the new battery. And Lynn and I agreed it was going to be nothing. So I was praising the Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. It's going to be nothing. The new battery is going to take care of everything. And it did. I mean, they changed the battery and there were no more issues. Amen. You Even didn't though it get was caught out in doing the road funny or... things, you know, yeah. and it was a little sluggish when I was going to pull out, like from a stop, and but new battery and good as new. Isn't that wonderful? Again, if she would have been out on the highway, she would have had to get a towed. God always looks out for us. You know, Jerry Seville, he's the favorite guy. And I always say I have favor everywhere I go, have favor with God and man all day long, and I do. I do. I don't even have to ask for it. There it is. See, we have to get to that point. Would you pray over that, Kenny? Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you, Father. We thank you for the blessings that you put upon us, Father. Father, now just like we heard in the teaching tonight, we have to be patient, and it don't come automatically. We need to wait on the Lord. And we just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and we give you the glory. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each one of you. Watch your back and walk in love. And whatever scripture God gave you for whatever you're going through, take that and other scriptures, put it up, and get your praise and worship in going. Got it? And I thank you for it. Quickly, um, Jeff, the policeman next door, he wanted to put up this yeah. um, shed. That's our policeman behind Jeff. Lawn, yeah. lawn shed. So I started forming it up, and then one of the neighbors said, hey, you guys, do you know, are you legal with the lot lines and all this kind of stuff? And, and so I told Jeff, I'll go to the town and find out. And so I found out that. So the next thing that came up was there's a, this high power line that goes through there. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> right where he's putting the shed is underneath that. But it's, you know, the shed's about eight feet high. This power line's up there 20, some 30 feet high. So <clears throat> he says, well, they're going to they're gonna, uh, prohibit me from putting the shed there. I says, no, 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 they're not. I said, we're going to have favor. I says, but we aren't just going to go ahead and put it up. You're going to go to them and tell them the situation, what what you're building, the height and everything. And I said, we're going to have favor. And so it took about two weeks before they finally come back to them. I said, oh, yeah, you can build it. <laughs> so, so, I, so I said to them, see, Jeff, I told you we're going to have favor. Amen. <laughs> so. Amen. He's not a believer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> right. You betcha. You bet he loves us and we love him. So, Father, I thank you that the blood of Jesus covers each and every one of us. 
and I give you the glory, and I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Do you receive it? Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. I'm going to put this right back, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.